Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Brad Swenson. Brad has a 25-year career in technology and healthcare sales and marketing. He's really been a key driver for hundreds of millions of dollars in software services, connected devices, really in many cases for the healthcare industry. And we're going to be talking about that background where that whole field is evolving and going, and some of the key issues that you see when you're building and leading those types of organizations and how to do that more effectively. People that know me, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to grow businesses. So, Brad, I'm really excited to talk to you about this stuff. But before we get there... Brad, tell us a little bit about you and your career. Sure. Well, I kind of fell into healthcare technology very early in my career um, and have pretty much stayed along that path uh, for over 25 years. You're being um, kind at 25 years, (laughs) but uh, it's been a fascinating journey. Um, Early in my career, I worked for uh, one of the large EMR players, Cerner Corporation, uh, certainly a thought leader in the business, and have continued to try to find companies that are leading uh, versus following uh, in the business. Um, certainly a company like Cerner was early in evidence-based medicine. Sometimes today we might argue that was early AI sorts of technology, helping physicians and caregivers um, do uh, make their job easier and apply so much additional knowledge and wisdom to the work that they do. Um, And I've continued through my career of leading larger teams, um, more complex teams that are not just uh, account manager folks calling on big big hospitals, but SMB sorts of uh, physician businesses and inside sales and demand gen and sales operations. So I've had a fun career and I look forward to uh, lots more exciting opportunities. Now, Brad, I mean, you talked to me about this methodology philosophy that you're working on. I think it's focus power. It sounded really interesting to me. Tell me more a little bit about that and how that drives the way you think about building a growth solution. Yeah, it's really a combination of two different things. At national sales meetings, there's been kind of two different topics that I've used in the past. One is the um, uh, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 phenomenon, where uh, I'm sure all of the listeners uh, understand what it is, but just this phenomenon, whether it's uh, um, 80% of our revenue are coming from our top 20% customers or, you know, the, the, the top 20% um, perform 80% of what drives a company. So it's that idea of the Pareto principle where bringing focus into our very busy lives, into the things that are going to have the force multipliers in not only our professional careers and the companies we work for, but also in our personal endeavors as a a parent, as a community leader. So it's really the Pareto principle. And then also looking at the concept of 212 degrees, which we all know is boiling temperature. Uh, 211 degrees, water is hot. One extra degree, it starts to boil. And boiling water creates steam, which creates power. So it's just one degree makes all that difference. And there's all sorts of analogies about how uh, in horse racing, uh, the the number one horse wins by a nose in golf tournaments. It's by one stroke. It's just that one extra degree. So now combining those two concepts of How do we prioritize those uh, top 20% things and then apply Mm -hmm. one extra degree of effort to it? The incredible things that that can happen in our professional careers as well in the companies that we lead. I love that. So focus power. And I like how that can drive a team, a company, but certainly on the growth side, for sure. And I mean, Brad, you know, you have had a 20, let's say 25 year plus career here. You have literally played a lot of key leadership roles here. And I think that anyone 
that runs any type of sales and growth team is always trying to figure out how do I do this better? What am I messing up? How do I do this so that I'm like capturing the best capabilities today? I mean, what's the secret sauce of that kind of modern leadership on the growth side? Yeah, interesting question. You know, years ago, let's say in the last five plus years, you see more and more uh, HR teams doing engagement surveys throughout companies. And perhaps earlier in my career, I didn't think much of them. I thought they were just kind of maybe a silly thing that HR people needed to do, or it was in an HBR yeah. magazine article. So it's something they did. But diving into the details, the reason why good people stay or leave a company, and a lot of it, it's it's again about engagement, but a lot of that has to do with the relationship that they have with their direct manager. Does their manager have mm -hmm. their back? Do they feel supported? Uh, those sorts of things. And I think perhaps sometimes I'll see leaders go a little too far in that direction. They feel they need to be the friend of all their employees. Um, but our, uh, our co-friend, uh, John McMahon, one of the four thinkers of enterprise software as a sales um, yeah. thinkers and authors and speakers, an incredible guy. In one of his books, he talks about uh, mentoring a sales rep who was thinking about getting into sales management. And he said, well, the difference is being a parent and not being a parent. When you're not a parent, you're just focused on yourself. That's all you do from a day-to-day -day perspective, Similar, yeah. similarly to many sales reps. The difference is when you become a parent, um, you have to start putting others in front of you. Um, right. And... You know, for my current uh, folks on my sales team and future salespeople that I, I work with, certainly don't um, take that the wrong way in a condescending way that I'm your parent. But just think right. about the analogy. Um, we're out there looking for their best interests. Um, yeah. We want to help make sure that they're successful. From time to time, they're going to screw up or they're going to have some shortfalls uh, that as a parent, we want to help. Um, guide them and hold them accountable. So I really like that yeah. analogy. I, I like it a lot. And it reminds me a lot about kind of what happened over the last several years. You know, we've lived through a really wild time with the pandemic and now coming out of the pandemic. And, you know, I feel the difference that that's happened is sales was perhaps less human before. You know, you could kind of not know the whole person in a way. You could be performance oriented, but not really understand the whole person. And I think what you just outlined is that that kind of family structure, that parental structure is really grabbing that idea of that holistic understanding, which I, uh, really resonates with me. That's excellent. And, you know, one of the other things, Brad, I know that a lot of organizations think about with with growth and sales, and it's something that... I always find quite interesting because uh, it, it comes up in different ways with different types of companies is coming up with, you know, where the company is going and forecasting the business and the projections, you know, and I, I act as an advisor and as an investor for uh, startups and a lot of entrepreneurs come up with these wild forecasts and it all looks amazing in a spreadsheet. And then they under deliver and I kind of tell them like, look, you know, this is dangerous when you under deliver. I mean, when you think about kind of planning things out on the sales side, especially right now, I would say in a world where the economy is kind of mixed, how do you get that forecasting right? Yeah, it's um, it's both a combination of science and art. I think in a lot of cases, sales organizations, sales leaders might use one methodology uh, for forecasting. And they're going to use one of a couple of popular sorts of ways of forecasting. One is a bottoms up, where we're going to sit down with each of our managers and what are each of the managers going to commit to what their team is going to do. Um, the other would be using your CRM and with weighted probability, what does the forecast say? Uh -huh. um, I think what we need to be doing is three different types of forecasting all at the same time to really drill in to a, a better forecast. And it's using both of those methodologies, a bottoms up and your weighted probability through your CRM. But I would add a third um, in taking a look at the momentum of your demand gen. Does that match what you're seeing within your forecast? Uh, demand gen is a leading indicator. And if we start to see that that's drying up, 
but yet our forecast looks great. Wait, there's right. something not right in the business today, whether there's a market problem, a competitive issue, something that we're doing internally. So I think bringing all three of those approaches together helps make a more uh, thoughtful, accurate uh, forecast. Yeah, I like that. I mean, one of the things that I struggle with sometimes is these forecasts where when you look at the results, they come in and sometimes the teams hit the targets, but it almost always kind of seems like they just get to the targets. How do you deal with that one, Brad? I'm trying to figure out, like, how do you build a solution where in some ways, like the forecast is not so low that it's obviously easy to hit, but not so high that it's missed, you know, I guess kind of being in that real sweet spot, I guess you'll use the three factors and we get there. Yeah, and I think then there's the the things like QBRs, very thoughtful QBRs, um, using great methodologies like MedPick to constantly be qualifying deals. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that helps our managers work with their frontline salespeople better in mm-hmm. delivering a more accurate forecast and hopefully winning more deals ultimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I know you've spent a lot of time working in a variety of different business verticals, technology, healthcare. I mean, when you look out at the marketplace right now, where do you think the growth is going to be coming from in the near future in some of these areas? I and mean, what are the key topics that customers are grappling with? Yeah, the vast majority of my career, I focused on enterprise deals, you know, talking with the very large health systems which it's getting more and more complicated to sell into these complex environments. And that's going to be your Fortune 1000 companies, non-healthcare companies as well, where it's not just a single department, a single um, individual that's making these decisions. It's consensus-based. They're very complex sorts of deals. So I think, again, Mm -hmm. using good methodologies um, and applying science to what our salespeople are doing is incredibly important. Um, I've worked with several organizations who are making that leap of having some success in the SMB um, space, working with physician groups or um, uh, clinics and sorts of things, and they want to go up market and they don't have that full grasp of the the complications in in selling into these large enterprises. Yeah, I mean, and those organizations are complex, to say the least. So knowing how to navigate that world is really, really critical. But let me change gears a little bit. It's always interesting for us to understand it and understand better why people kind of do what they do, you know, and clearly in your career, you've kind of gravitated to this world of focusing on growth and sales and marketing. What is it about kind of what you do that kind of really drives that passion and gets you up in the morning. Yeah. I don't know. That could be a long conversation. Uh, (laughs) You know, I I, I look perhaps, um, I grew up in a very small town in Western Minnesota where my dad was an attorney. My mom was a nurse. So they always work really hard. Um, Early on, my dad got me into scouting to follow in his footsteps. And now I'm proud to say at this, at this time, I have, uh, Uh, My dad and my uncle are Eagle Scouts. My two brothers and I are Eagle Scouts. I have two sons that are Eagle Scouts, and I have a nephew that's an Eagle Scout. So now we're looking to the next generation. Hopefully there'll be a fourth generation. And now um, it's wonderful that girls can now also participate in Scouts. I could have uh, a granddaughter that's an Eagle Scout maybe someday. Um, But I think some of that early on instilled uh, a passion around leadership. Um, which then Mm. took me into working as a lifeguard and managing a a, uh, the city swimming pool and then managing the college swimming pool and then just continued on in this leadership journey. And I find it so incredibly fulfilling of uh, helping other people's dreams come true in a career of selling. Yeah. And I see that you know, when you kind of take something where you work on it and then you kind of can get to the point where you actually are developing like your own methodology, you can see how you have tracked how you build a team, how you can get the most out of that team and push it to the next level. 
But I mean, clearly, Brad, things are not slowing down at all right now in the world. We have a very odd, I'd say, economic cycle that we're living through. Every day, I can't tell whether things are going to be great or really bad you know, in the near future. But I mean, what are you seeing out there? Brad Nostradamus, what's on the horizon for all of us? Well, my eyes are brown and my initials are BS, so take it for what it's worth. <laughs> you know, I think admitting that even though we've we've been working on our crafts for a very long time, um, you're right. Things continue to change. Uh, the people that we manage come from a different generation and they operate differently than we do. Uh, so recognizing that we're not going to have all the answers, we never will. It's so now with the beauty mm -hmm. of... Uh, podcasts and so many incredible authors and thought leaders out there of carving out time each and every day to learn from other smart people. Um, because again, you're right, things are not getting any simpler. It's getting more complex. So how can we as leaders bring even more value to our organizations and as importantly to the people that we lead? Yeah. And I think I'm going right back to your methodology, which is I feel like in a world where we're just having more and more complexity, that, that beauty of prioritizing those core things, that's so critical, right? And we can use systems to data analyze, et cetera. But at the end of the day, we've got to get it down to those core things that will really move that one degree, right? And pop it. So I really love that thought, Brad. And I think that clearly everybody that I speak to these days is focused on how do I get growth going? How do I move things forward? So it's really, really great to speak to you today. If someone wanted to learn more about all of the stuff that you have been working on and really kind of where they could perhaps grow in the future, what's the best place to reach you? Yeah, certainly I'm a, a big user of LinkedIn. So they can find me uh, easily on LinkedIn. I also just put together a personal website, uh, Focus Powers, sorry, focuspower.solutions, where I try to put some of these thoughts in a blog. Uh, to more broadly share some of these ideas and my journey as I tried to learn more about these different things. Excellent. Well, I mean, we've been speaking with Brad Swenson. We've been talking really about the broader area of, I'd say, technology, healthcare, sales, and marketing. And Brad has, you know, 25 year plus years of experience in the area been talking about a lot of the changes in some of the areas that people can be making improvements in, in terms of being aware of how to be a leader, how to be a modern leader, how to think about perhaps applying the ideas of being more holistic and human and being a good parent to individuals. Think about how you do things like forecasting more effectively, not maybe just doing it in the basic ground up way, but perhaps applying a whole bunch of different areas to that and then last but not least brad you know go to this website what's the website again brad focus, focus power dot solutions focus power dot solutions go check it out folks and uh hear about what brad's thinking on the sales side and sign up for the blog and we'll go from there brad thank you so much for being on uncage today and we look forward to having you back great chatting with you thanks for your time 